I know that uh, Fordham is all for uh, moving federal policy towards carrots, but it's all about sticks today, so I'm going to try to keep my remarks focused and on time and uh, to the point. For all the talk of accountability that we've had in these days, I am frustrated by the fact that we haven't done a lot to define what we really mean by that term and particularly accountability to whom and for what, I think are critical questions that we need to be asking more. What we have under current federal law is compliance, not accountability. It's not uh, something that engenders responsibility at the, at the local level. Put bluntly, it's about completing paperwork and jumping through hoops to get money. It's not an arrangement that cultivates that kind of responsibility taking for real and holistic student progress. And it's not going to yield the kind of academic achievement we all want to see. So rather than answering up the bureaucratic chain of command to Washington, accountability for results should be directed to parents and taxpayers. We're more likely to see progress when incentives are aligned so that schools are most accountable to those with the most at stake in students actually learning, that is their parents, and to the people who are footing the bill, taxpayers. Federal intervention has detracted from this proper alignment. That's why we need to redirect accountability from Washington towards parents. Transparency is the first step. The next step is empowering parents to act on that information. Giving parents choice gives them the power to hold schools accountable. Now, this was part of the theory, of course, behind No Child Left Behind and its cascade of interventions. But as we've seen over the past decade, federal policy is a weak lever to achieve this. On the other hand, we see a great example in Florida of why systemic reform that includes school choice is successful at the state level. In Florida, parents have access to school performance data that is designed for them, not for bean counters. Schools are graded on a straightforward A through F scale that we all learned very well in our own days in the classroom. Florida then gives parents a wide array of choices about their children's education. Systemic reform in Florida is reducing achievement gaps, succeeding in the very task that Washington has failed at since it started intervening toward that goal in 1965. So let me answer directly the questions that Checker posed uh, prior to this meeting, and then I'll elaborate on a couple of the points I've just made. Uh, yes, it is time for us to turn the page on AYP, and we should not try to replace it with another, yet another, federally mandated accountability system. And systemic reform, including accountability systems, should be a state-level endeavor. So what do I mean when I say that we have today, under current law, a compliance regime and less of a, an accountability one? States assumed this, uh, this compliance posture soon after uh, ESEA became law in 1965. State bureaucracies doubled in size in the five years after the passage of that law in an effort to tap the new federal funding source and to implement federal programs. Since then, the compliance burden has grown with the increasing number and scope of federal programs. This complexity creates a focus on compliance, not accountability, not responsibility for student learning. Meanwhile, Washington's intervention seems to have brought out the worst in education governance at the other levels. It's led to increased state bureaucracy, as I just mentioned, local bureaucracy, shifted focus towards compliance with federal policy. And all of this undermines schools' direct accountability to parents and other taxpayers and erodes good governance. The original intent in 1965, of course, was compensatory aid, funding for low-income districts to help close the achievement gap between needy students and their peers. Nearly half a century later, the gap remains. We need to be asking what, why our strategies aren't working. One of the reasons I would say is that over the years, the fundamental mismatch between the federal government's constitutional limits and its interventionist education policy has led to perpetual expansion and overhaul of programs. These have been ill-fated attempts to make federal intervention succeed where it has neither the authority nor the capacity to get results. So in the mid-1990s, we saw a compensatory aid shift to systemic reform. Goals 2000 and the Clinton era in Improving America's Schools Act launched a national accountability framework. No Child Left Behind made it more explicit and added teeth, but it hasn't worked. 
Now we're approaching the ninth reauthorization and having the same conversation. And yet this debate over the mechanics of accountability, I think, misses the point. The core problems in public education today are a misaligned power and incentive structure. Washington's accountability levers won't change that. In fact, the federal accountability to debate distracts from addressing this fundamental misalignment. Proper alignment means incentives are aligned so that pr schools primarily respond to those with the most at stake in students' educational outcomes. That's why accountability should be directed towards, uh, first and foremost, towards parents. Two major factors are throwing off this alignment, teacher union power and funding incentives. These factors introduce motivations that are separate from and too often end up competing with the objective of improving student outcomes. Unions' interests, including job security, salaries, benefits, should be understood as distinct from student educational outcome objectives. Teacher unions exert influence because of their mandatory dues-paying membership and power to negotiate contracts. Likewise, federal funding is an incentive that can sometimes trump interest in actual student progress. When we see states gaming their cut scores to make AYP, that's an example of federal funding as a more powerful incentive than actual learning. Why does this happen? Well, parents have a much weaker voice in the current power and incentive structure. They don't have the power to withhold funding nor collective bargaining authority. On the other hand, they have the most at stake in seeing their kids meet educational success and therefore the greatest interest in students actually learning. So to conclude, current federal accountability plans fail to address this fundamental misalignment of power and incentives in public education today. Washington should get out of the systemic reform business and leave that to the states.